Hey there, sports fan. Mike Crook coming at you with another episode of Laces Out. Back in the studio this time after we took a week off while Trey and I did that road show back on the 12th of October. Still can't get over how that game ended, but it is what it is. CU rebounded, took it to Arizona, and, well, they got another challenge this week against Cincinnati, but we'll cover that later. In this episode, we're going to talk about the state of the NFL as it pertains to the Kansas City Chiefs. Trying to do what no team has done since 1972 in one aspect, and no team has done it all in another one. Stay tuned for that one. Also, what the hell is going on in Tallahassee right now? It's absurd. Lastly, we'll have our picks for both the ACC and Big 12 games this week, so stay tuned. All right, so first things first, we're going to dive into the world of the NFL and what the hell is going on with the Kansas City Chiefs. Undefeated, last undefeated team in the league right now, and looking to become the first team to do a three-peat for Super Bowl champs. Can anyone stop this juggernaut? I mean, what the hell? I mean, look at what they're doing today. They just pulled out a trade for the Titans' DeAndre Hopkins at wide receiver. They've already got a pretty decent wide receiver room right now with Xavier Worthy, I think, is still running the top spot, with Juju Smith-Schuster running a number two. It's like, come on, you got speed upon speed with Xavier. His route running still leaves a little bit uh, to be desired. But that kid is fast. And Juju, we, you know, that's just a solid workhorse wide, ah, wide receiver right there. And to top that off, they've also got Travis Kelsey and Noah Gray at tight end. Like, come on. You've got receivers up the ass. And then you add D-Hop to that? Oh, who's going to stop the Chiefs? I know Patty Mahomes has not been like to his normal Patty Mahomes level uh, by this time of the season. But they're still finding a way to win these games. They're looking to become the first team since 1972 to go undefeated. And yes, they would have to include a Super Bowl championship at that aspect because the Pats did it, you know, way back in the earlier 2000s, but were denied, thankfully, by the Giants to not get that perfect season. So that record is still owned by the 72 Dolphins. Can this year's Chiefs break it? I hope not. <laughs> I know there's a lot of Chiefs fans out there. Good for you, but diehard Bronco fan and just a diehard fan that's tired of seeing this team win and tired of seeing Taylor Swift on that damn TV screen for uh, during Chiefs football games. But can somebody please stop the Chiefs? Like, you wouldn't think it'd be that hard. There's so much tape on this team, yet somehow they always find a way to win. I don't know what it's going to take. Post your comments below. Let me know what you think because... I'm at a loss on what it's going to take to stop this team. Moving on to Tallahassee, what's going on there? Like, I don't know what it's going to take for this team to find a way to win. It's, it's really hard to be a Seminoles fan right now. You would think that Duke, I mean, this is a team we've never lost to in the existence of football. Yet somehow, we find a way to win. Like, Brock Glenn, I know you're a redshirt freshman and mistakes are going to happen. But it's never happened before in the history of FBS. Three straight plays where you cause a turnover. Picks and fumbles. Like, why? And I think one of those is even a pick six. Like, adding insult to injury, this team has the spark to be something great. It's fundamentals that are killing this team. Like, drop passes. Like, I don't care who's behind center. If you can't catch a ball, if you can't catch a cold, I don't care if it's Tom freaking Brady throwing those balls. You're not winning a game if you can't catch the damn ball. Like, seriously, you guys, come on. And the stupid, like, offsides penalties, false starts, like, at the most inopportune time. Is this the players that just aren't scheme properly? Like, they're just not in the right headspace to play? Is this coaching? Like, I don't even know what the problem is at this point. I know that at this point in the season, they're not going to fire Norvell. That's just a done deal. It's not going to happen. At the end of the season, uh, it's hard to say. He's got a really massive buyout, like 60, uh, 60 mil buyout, something like that. Like, it's absurd. I don't think Florida State has that kind of cash laying around. I don't know if the boosters are going to pony up that kind of money. What I do know, stay out of the damn transfer portal. It is meant to fix like small little holes in your armor, like small little chinks in there. Fix that. But you need to go back to the basics. Recruit these kids in high school. You know, mold them, bring them up in the system. So that way you have third and fourth year players starting games 
that have been in the system for a while that want to play for this university, not just get that NIL deal or get a fast track to the NFL because they're playing for a team like Florida State, which isn't as sexy as it used to be, let's be honest. The team has kind of fallen on hard times, especially after going undefeated, winning a conference championship to what they are now, one win. One! And we have losses to Duke. Like, it's Miami week. You have kids that are in the transfer portal that aren't going to give two shits about Miami. I'm sorry, I'm not even going to worry about bleeping anything out in this one. I don't care. I'm not monetized yet, maybe. But kids that are in the, uh, in the transfer portal, odds are... They don't care about the rivalry between FSU and Miami. They're not going to care that this is a game that you circle on the calendar every year and you fight your ass off to win this one. The kids that come to school to play, they know about that rivalry. They know what it's about and they're going to want to see blood. They're going to give it their all on that field and they're going to leave nothing, nothing by the time that clock hits zero. Will the transfer kids do that too? I don't know. I mean, Jordan, Travis, Keon, those kids fought. But those are rare breeds. Kids like that, you know, uh, I think Johnny too. I mean, those are like once-in-a-lifetime finds. I don't think Norvell is going to be able to find kids like that again in the transfer portal. So you guys need to start bringing in coaches that can recruit, get in the homes, wine and dine these kids, bring them up in the system. It's going to take, I'm not even kidding, two to three years tops, or sorry, at minimum, to get back to sustainability and consistency and being able to compete just in the conference let alone on a national stage. So please, Miami, have mercy on Seminoles. <laughs> have mercy on the Seminole Nation this week. It's going to be a blood, uh, bloodbath. But stay tuned for my picks on that one later. So let's press on. And a quick side note, in Boulder, you guys are doing amazing. Like after the turnaround on last year, there were one win the year before that, and they went 4-8 and eight last year. They've already eclipsed that win total now. And they're on the cusp of a bull berth. Like, come on. They've got Cincinnati at home for another primetime kickoff. Look for that one to be a really electric game. Hopefully, hopefully, Travis is full, uh, back to full strength, because I know they pulled him in the second half last week. But that's just because the game was kind of getting away from him. You know, uh, there was no need to risk injuring him any further. Let's have him prime for the rest of the games. See, you kind of had that one in hand. So I understand that one. Hopefully, all the playmakers are feeling great, and they take it to the Bearcats and you know come out of Folsom with a win this time better than they did a couple weeks ago. So stay tuned for my picks on that one as well. All right, so first in the picks this week, we're going to jump into the ACC. They've got a, quite a slate of games coming up this week, so uh, we're just going to rapid-fire this stuff. Nothing major. I really do want to get a nice little graphic that I can throw on the side here so it's an easy little uh, bullet point on every pick. Uh, didn't have a chance to mess around with that this week, so maybe next week. Stay tuned. All right, so rapid fire. Here we go. First up, Thursday night game, Syracuse at Pitt. Give me Pitt. Coming up on Friday, we've got Louisville at Boston Couch. Give me Louisville. Honestly, they uh, they held to the Canes pretty good. And uh, here we go, the Saturday slate. There's, what, what, six games going on this Saturday. So first up, Georgia Tech at Virginia Tech. Give me the Yellow Jackets in a close one. Then we have UNC at Virginia. Give me the Hokies. Wake Forest at Stanford. Give me Stanford. I don't know why, but give me Stanford. Oregon State at Cal. Give me Oregon State all day. And SMU at Duke. Mm, this is a tough one, but I'm going to actually go SM, uh, SMU on this one. Lastly, FSU at Miami. Uh, I don't want to pick the Canes. It hurts me to pick the Canes, but I'm sorry, FSU. You haven't shown me anything. Show me something. And I'll start to believe in you a little bit more. I mean, I believe in my Knowles. Don't get me wrong. I believe in you guys. I really do. I just don't think you have what it takes to get the dub this week. So give me Miami, surprisingly, closer than the experts think. Okay, and before we jump into the Big 12 picks, I would like to take a quick second to thank you for watching this far. I, I greatly appreciate it. It means a lot to me and the channel. And if you have liked the content so far, please like the video. Please share it out. It definitely helps out all the algorithms. Algorithms. <laughs> For YouTube and all the other social media gods, whatever you might, uh, whatever platform you might see this on, but uh, yeah, okay. So let's jump in. Big Twelve picks. There's what uh, seven games on the slate this weekend. So let's go. Just like ACC rapid fire, we're gonna start off with BYU at UCF. Give me the Cougars all day. That uh, they got this one. Okie State at Baylor. 
Uh, I'm going to go Oklahoma State on this one. Texas Tech at TCU. Give me the Red Raiders on this one. West Virginia, Arizona. Oh, Mountaineers all day. I'm sorry. Arizona does not have what it takes to take on West Virginia. Utah at Houston. Ah, this could be a tough one. I'm actually going to lean. Uh, no, you know what? Yep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to lean towards Utah on this one. Uh, give me the Utes. Kansas at Kansas State. Always love those interstate, uh, in-state rivalries. I mean, it doesn't matter what the records are. Teams show up. But K-State gets a dub on this one. It's a home game. It's against the rival. There's no way they lose this one, right? Lastly, Cincinnati at CU. Both of these teams are right up there in the conference, jockeying for a top spot, maybe hoping somebody above them, above them falls, so that way they can just slide right in to a possible Big 12 championship spot. You never know how the season's going to unfold. But who thought we'd be talking about CU this late in the season as a possible hopeful for an outside shot at a conference title spot? Give me the buffs in this one. I'm not going to pick a spread. I'm not going to pick a final score, but closer than the experts think. Give me CU. There you have it. Another episode of Laces Out is officially in the books. Hope you enjoyed it. I know that we've done a couple of road shows this year, and those are officially done. Or are they? You never know. We might sneak in one more road show this year. Guess you have to wait and find out. But until then, see you guys next week and enjoy the slate of games.